Zebra sharks make great diving friends. What's going on everybody? My name is Brandon Ringstead. Welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. I want this to be a safe place for anyone to broaden their horizons and go on an adventure. Today we're going to discover the soft sandy floors of the zebra shark. I used my own reference photo, a 8x10 canvas and Liquitex Basics acrylic paint. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Stegostoma fasciatum are also known as zebra sharks. They are a member of the carpet sharks. This group of sharks are found in the sea floor and resemble beautifully patterned carpets. So where can we find the zebra shark? They can be found in the Indo-Pacific and Western Pacific Ocean, from the east coast of Africa, up around to India and Asia, as far north as Japan and as far south as Australia. They prefer warm tropical marine water from 1 to 90 meters, but prefer 5 to 30 meters. They're a reef associated shark, spending most of their time on sandy or small rocky substrate. During the day, they rest between rocks and coral on the seafloor sleeping. During the night, they roam around and hunt. What are we looking for when looking for the zebra shark? Juvenile zebra sharks are commonly mistaken for leopard sharks, but as they grow, they become distinct. Juveniles have a dark body and yellow stripes. Adults turn light brown or yellow colored with dark spots. There is a rare population that does not have any spots called the sandy zebra shark. These are still the same species to a regular zebra shark. Scientists don't know why these adults have, don't have any spots. It's a mystery. How big do these sharks get? Zebra sharks grow to 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet in length. Half of that length is just tail. They have a long top lobe tail with an underdeveloped bottom tail lobe. These sharks are bottom associated sharks, so there is no room for the bottom lobe. What do they look like? Zebra sharks have a cylindrical body shape, a broad flat head, flattened pectoral fins, small eyes, and a small mouth. They have a set of small barbels and nasal grooves that lead to their mouth. They have a short first dorsal fin that blends into five body ridges that run along the shark. One ridge is in the center and then two sets of ridges on each side. Their whole body is covered in little dark spots. I have a feeling that these spots will take a long time to paint. Also, why is it a zebra shark? Most of its life it has spots, not stripes. It would be more fitting as the cheetah shark or the leopard shark. Oh, wait, that's already taken. Uh, what about the giraffe shark? They have spots and are long. Okay, I'm just getting distracted now. But it was an interesting thought. Now, let's discover some behaviors. Zebra sharks are nocturnal. They are active during the night. And during the day, they sleep or watch the world go by. They sit motionless on the seafloor facing the current. They let the water move over their gills so that they can breathe. If the current is not fast enough, they might find a narrow section of reef to amplify the current or use buccal pump to force water over their gills. During the night, they roam around looking for food. They are careful not to wander too far but some individuals have been recorded swimming up to 140 kilometers or 80 miles away. Zebra sharks are solitary sharks. 
they prefer to be on their own. Occasionally, there can be schools up to 50, but scientists aren't sure why this happens. There is not a definite breeding time. Zebra sharks live up to 28 years old and lay sticky eggs called mermaid purses. These eggs stick to the sediment or vertical rock or piling for up to six to eight months. Then new zebra sharks emerge. They're less than a foot long and super cute. Some people use them in personal aquariums, but they quickly outgrow their tanks and need to be sold. If you want to see a zebra shark, just go diving with them. They're sweethearts. In local dive areas, they get used to divers, and some let you get close for the photo, but please don't touch. If they come up to you and touch you, now that is fine. But they are sharks and not dogs. Some have been trained to be at a certain area by divers so that they can be part of ecotourism. Alrighty, let's move on to our next segment of the adventure. What do zebra sharks eat and how are they doing? Zebra sharks have small flat mouths with tiny teeth. They have 22 to 30 rows of small teeth used for crushing and chewing food. They enjoy crustaceans, mollusks, bony fish, and occasionally sea snakes. They use their teeth to crush the shells of these animals and chew their food nicely. There are no recorded unprovoked attacks on humans from a zebra shark. There are a few provoked attacks, but the people were dumb and tried to ride the shark, so they got chomped. They didn't die, but they got hurt. So how are zebra sharks doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as endangered, with a decreasing population. This study was conducted in 2015. Oof. I have not had an endangered animal on this show in a long time, and it hurts my heart. These poor sweeties. They don't have any natural predators or threats besides some larger sharks, but that is also rare. And I can bet that you can guess what is killing these animals. Yep, humans. Humans still hunt these sharks for their meat, fins, and they use oils in their liver as medicine. These sharks are super easy to catch since they don't move during the day. We need to stop hunting sharks. Our oceans desperately need sharks to survive. This planet needs sharks. A healthy ocean is a healthy planet. But there is a silver lining to this story. In Australia, it was banned to kill these animals. A population on the north coast of Australia is increasing in numbers and is considered least concerned. Woohoo! Go Australia! It is also illegal to harvest sharks in the United States, but product can still be imported, so let's fix this. I don't like bumming people out, but I also want our oceans to be treated well. This takes us to the final part of our adventure. What was my personal experience with this shark? This zebra shark was seen at the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium in Tacoma, Washington. It was lazily swimming around the Southern Pacific Aquarium. It is a separate building to the Pacific Seas. Here they have sharks, rays, and tropical fish. So I was walking along and saw this massive zebra shark sitting on the bottom of the tank in some sands. It was just chilling there, and I loved it. It was hard to get a good photo. The tank is relatively shallow and there is acrylic wall so that you can see underwater. The only problem was that this wall was filled with little handprints. Now I don't blame the local children for touching the glass. They loved seeing the majestic shark face to face. I love their enthusiasm. It reminds me of a smaller me. And you will be proud of me. I didn't even squeeze my way in front of the kids. And I didn't stand right in the way when taking photos either. I have, on occasion, accidentally, pushed people out of the way 
in my excitement. Now, my family won't let me forget it. <laughs> Anyways, there are tons of tropical fish swimming around and even a moray eel named Gordon who visits the zebra shark. If you go in the winter, this is an amazing place to hang out. Since it's a tropical aquarium, they keep their air temperature warm. Go out, find some sharks, become their friends, and stop being afraid of all the sharks. There are some sharks to be afraid of, but this gentle giant is not one of them. I know my reference photo is at an aquarium, but I painted it light, like it was in the ocean on a sandy flat with rays of light sparkling down from the waves. I wanted this painting to bring a sense of peace. The kind of peace the zebra shark has when waiting for night. Go out and love your neighbor, even if that neighbor is a shark. There we have it, this painting is finished, and I hope you had fun along the way. Please stick around to hear about this month's charity opportunity. This month I am helping NAMI. NAMI stands for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. They're the, na they're the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. They educate, advocate, listen, and lead in improving the lives of those and the families who are affected by mental illness. I wanted to do my part and raise some funds for this year, especially since the times are so hard. Please take care of yourself, know that you are loved, and reach out if you need help. If you would like to help this community, I would really appreciate it so that I can keep running these episodes for you. You can help by purchasing the art that you see. Now I sell the originals, so this piece that I just made in this video you can purchase the original, $12 a linear inch, and it's yours. I also offer museum quality Gicle prints at $6 a linear inch and $3 a linear inch. My $6 a linear inch ones, I touch up afterwards so that they look as close to the original as possible. They're all obviously unique because I can't make them exactly the same, but they're gonna have the glitter, the pearlescence, or the glass bead gel medium on them as well. The $3 linear inch ones will not. So how you calculate price by linear inches is you take the height and you add it to the width and then you multiply by 12, 6, or 3. I am also selling posters and vinyl stickers. My posters are $15 and my vinyl stickers are 5 I just sent in a new design, a set of new designs. When I get those, I will let you know and let you see those. Make sure to tag me in your photos of where you put your sticker or poster. Just use hashtag nature meets paper. I would love to see them. Thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me to have your support. If you have any critiques or, or have any questions at all, make sure to leave those down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you on those. If you would like, you can subscribe and ring the notification bell. It's free. The notification bell will alert you to whenever I post new content. I do my best to post new content every other weekend. Thanks again. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I'll see you in our next adventure.